Creativity knows no boundaries, and 21-year-old Chisoba Amalu is proof of that. With minimal formal education, he achieved something extraordinary. He built a car from scratch. This remarkable feat took him 10 months of relentless effort and determination. His creation, a prototype called Gravity X, showcases his raw talent and ingenuity. Meanwhile, another young innovator, Jerry Malo from Nigeria, has made waves with his own automotive masterpiece. He recently unveiled the Bernie Sternum, a high-performance sports car designed for African roads. This sleek, luxurious vehicle combines style with power, featuring an 8.2-liter V8 gas engine. Africa has never lacked brilliance, vision, or groundbreaking ideas. What it has lacked, however, is the confidence to trust its own genius without seeking external validation. Too often, African innovators find themselves waiting, waiting for approval, waiting for funding, waiting for the world to take notice. At the heart of this struggle stands Maxwell Chikambutso, a self-taught inventor from Zimbabwe. His story is one of both inspiration and frustration, a reflection of Africa's untapped potential. With no formal engineering training, he claims to have developed revolutionary technologies. Among them is a self-charging electric car that defies conventional physics. Unlike traditional electric vehicles, his invention allegedly requires no fuel, no charging, and no external power source. If true, this breakthrough could redefine energy consumption worldwide. Yet, instead of celebrating his achievement at home, Chikambutso turned to foreign investors. Like many African innovators before him, he sought recognition abroad rather than within his own continent. This pattern raises difficult questions about Africa's ability to nurture and protect its brightest minds. When Chikambutso attempted to patent his technology, he faced unexpected resistance. Authorities claimed his invention violated the laws of physics, dismissing it as impossible. This rejection highlights a deeper issue, the reluctance to embrace radical ideas without Western endorsement. But is Chikambutso's invention truly revolutionary? Or is it too good to be true? Skeptics have raised doubts, pointing to failed demonstrations and unfulfilled promises. Some investors who traveled to see his prototypes left disappointed, finding only non-functional models. Online discussions have fueled accusations of fraud, with critics labeling his work a scam. Yet, there are also reasons to pause before dismissing his claims entirely. Chikambutso has spoken of attempts on his life, including a poisoning that killed his associate. If his inventions were mere deception, why would powerful forces feel threatened? The truth remains uncertain, but the broader implications are undeniable. Africa's innovation ecosystem is broken, forcing its brightest minds to seek support elsewhere. Compare this to China, where technological ambition is met with unwavering government backing. Chinese companies like Huawei and BYD compete globally without waiting for foreign approval. Similarly, American giants like Tesla and Apple thrive because they trust their own vision. In Africa, however, innovators face a different reality, one of skepticism, underfunding, and systemic neglect. The consequences are devastating. Brilliant ideas are either abandoned or appropriated by foreign entities. African inventions end up patented overseas, profiting others while their creators remain unrecognized. The cycle repeats, leaving the continent dependent instead of dominant. Chikambutso's story is a microcosm of this larger struggle. His journey reflects both the brilliance of African ingenuity and the barriers holding it back. The question is not whether his car works, it's whether Africa can create a system where such innovations thrive. Real change requires more than just individual genius. It demands structural transformation. Africa must build its own incubators, funding mechanisms, and intellectual property protections. It must celebrate its innovators before the world does, fostering confidence from within. Most importantly, it must stop seeking permission to lead. The future will not be handed to Africa, it must be claimed. Chikambutso's legacy, whether as a pioneer or a cautionary tale, should spark this shift. The time for waiting is over. The time for action is now. If Africa does not support its visionaries, others will, and the continent will once again be left behind. This is not just about one man or one invention. It is about rewriting the narrative of African innovation. 
The world is watching, but Africa must stop waiting for applause and start building its own stage. The choice is clear, lead or be left out. The next chapter depends on what Africa decides to do next. The story of Maxwell Chikambutso is not an isolated incident but part of a much larger pattern across Africa. For decades, the continent has produced brilliant minds whose innovations could have transformed societies. Yet time and again, these breakthroughs fail to reach their full potential due to systemic neglect. The reasons behind this cycle are complex, deeply rooted in history, economics, and global power dynamics. Colonial legacies left many African nations with educational systems that prioritize theory over practical innovation. University curricula often remain outdated, failing to equip students with hands-on technical skills. Research funding is scarce, forcing many aspiring inventors to rely on personal savings or foreign grants. Infrastructure challenges, from unreliable electricity to limited internet access, create additional barriers. Even when prototypes are developed, manufacturing capabilities are often insufficient for mass production. Investors within Africa tend to favor traditional industries over high-risk technological ventures. This risk aversion stems from both economic instability and lack of technical expertise among financiers. Government policies frequently lack clear frameworks for supporting grassroots innovation. Bureaucratic hurdles make patent registration painfully slow compared to Western standards. Corruption within some systems means deserving projects may lose funding to less qualified but well-connected proposals. Brain drain further exacerbates the problem as talented individuals seek opportunities abroad. The psychological impact of these systemic failures cannot be underestimated. Young innovators internalize the message that their ideas must be validated elsewhere to matter. This creates a self-perpetuating cycle where even successful inventors look outward first. Cultural attitudes also play a significant role in how innovation is perceived. In many communities, stable government jobs are still valued more than entrepreneurial ventures. Failure carries heavy stigma, discouraging the trial and error process essential for breakthroughs. Families often pressure young graduates toward conventional career paths for financial security. Traditional education systems reward memorization over creative problem-solving skills. Religious beliefs sometimes clash with scientific approaches, particularly in energy-related fields. These cultural factors create invisible barriers that many Western innovators never face. Media representation further skews perceptions of African capability. International coverage tends to focus either on poverty or exceptional against all odds stories. Rarely does reporting highlight the systemic support systems enabling innovation elsewhere. This creates a distorted view where African success appears miraculous rather than expected. Local media often lacks the resources to properly cover science and technology developments. When breakthroughs do occur, they frequently go unnoticed by both local and international press. The result is a landscape where innovators struggle to find role models or blueprints for success. Global economic systems also actively disadvantage African innovation. Intellectual property laws favor nations with established patent infrastructures. International corporations often acquire African innovations at fractions of their true value. Trade agreements make it difficult for African-made technologies to compete globally. Climate change disproportionately affects African nations, diverting resources from innovation to adaptation. Currency fluctuations make long-term research funding particularly unstable. Foreign aid sometimes undermines local innovation by flooding markets with donated technologies. These structural inequalities create an uneven playing field from the outset. Yet despite these challenges, examples of unstoppable African innovation persist. In Kenya, young engineers have developed mobile apps revolutionizing agricultural practices. South African scientists have pioneered medical breakthroughs in HIV treatment and prevention. Nigerian tech startups are creating fintech solutions adopted across the continent. Ghanaian engineers have developed solar-powered systems tailored to rural communities. These successes prove that talent exists. What's missing are enabling ecosystems. The solution requires simultaneous action on multiple fronts. Education systems must shift toward applied learning and creative problem-solving. 
Governments need to establish clear innovation policies with dedicated funding streams. Private sector partnerships can bridge gaps between research and commercialization. Pan-African collaboration could pool resources for large-scale technological projects. Grassroots innovation hubs are proving effective at nurturing early-stage ideas. Success stories must be amplified to shift cultural perceptions and inspire new generations. The role of diaspora communities could be pivotal in transferring knowledge and resources. International partnerships should focus on equitable technology transfer rather than aid. Policy reforms must protect intellectual property while encouraging. Open innovation. Investment in digital infrastructure can level the playing field for remote innovators. These changes won't happen overnight, but the blueprint exists in emerging success stories. Rwanda's focused investment in technology and governance offers one promising model. Botswana's careful management of mineral wealth to fund education provides another. The African Union's Agenda 2063 outlines ambitious technological development goals. Regional collaborations like the East African community are harmonizing innovation policies. These seeds of change need nurturing to grow into transformative systems. Maxwell Chikumbutso's story, whether ultimately one of triumph or caution, has sparked crucial conversations. It forces us to examine why such brilliant struggles to find footing at home. More importantly, it challenges us to envision an Africa where his next steps would be different. An Africa where validation comes first from within its own institutions, where funding flows to bold ideas without requiring foreign intermediaries, where infrastructure supports rather than hinders technological advancement. This future is possible, but only through deliberate collective action. The cost of inaction is measured in millions of unrealized potentials in brilliant minds leaving the continent or abandoning their dreams, in solutions to African problems being developed elsewhere and sold back at premium prices, in generations growing up without seeing what African innovation truly looks like. The time has come to break this cycle, not with rhetoric, but with systemic reforms. Not someday, but now. The world is changing rapidly, and Africa cannot afford to keep waiting. Every Maxwell Chikambutso who succeeds against the odds proves what's possible. Imagine what could happen if the odds were finally in their favor. That is the Africa we must build, starting today.